Hello, uh, today we will be covering epidemiology of hypertension and of course stroke. These two topics have combined. Uh, actually they are interrelated to some extent and uh, we have taken them together. So hy hypertension is one of the scourge and it is coming uh, to an uh, epidemic proportions. Particularly it was noticed somewhere in 20th century and again day by day it is increasing. And uh, this is supposed to be, they say it is a hypertension, it is a silent killer. Why do they say it is a, a silent killer? For well, the two reasons. One, a person who may be asymptomatic and uh, he may still have hypertension and he is absolutely asymptomatic. And one fine day he suffers acute uh, myocardial infarction or stroke and that is the day he comes to know that uh, yes, it has occurred. So that is why it is known as silent killer. Okay, now hypertension, these are the chronic condition, it is the most important uh, stroke and heart uh, cardiac disease, it is the most important cause as a major public health problem and uh, mortality is almost directly attributable to somewhere between 20 to 50 percent and uh, see there are so many definitions, they keep on changing, definitions they always keep on changing, what should be the uh, limit cut off a line from where hypertension starts, it keeps on, it makes a bell shape, it curves and there is no uh, clear cut line between normal tensive and the hypotensive. Hypertensive. No clear cut. It keeps on changing. Well, uh, now basic thing we have to understand something like 120 by 80 is the normal range and the pre hypertensive somewhere uh, 80 to 90 they say and hypertensive significant 90 to 91 and uh, thereafter hypertensive is 100 plus that is diastolic and 160 above. Now, with the age also, these are variations are there, but uh, in a gross way, you can take it, the person who is in their 60s and 70s, 140, 90, is taken as normal sometimes, but uh, uh, limit keeps on changing. Now, tracking is a uh, important thing because they have found that uh, if the person is having hypertension today, they start somewhere in the early age also, so tracking is very important. What is more important here is the uh, hypertension per se. Uh, it is there, but target organ damage is the most important thing. There are different organs right from top to bottom. All the organs are affected right from brain, eyes and uh, for that matter every each and every organ is affected and that is why that is known as target organ damage and hypertension is responsible for that. Now BP measurements. Now question is ki how do we observe? What is the correct uh, uh, measure it? That is the conventional BP instrument, the um, Corsica sounds are there, the first uh, appearance and disappearance was taken. But there was a some scope for the subjective error also because individual variations are there. Now what has happened, electronic thing is coming up now, muffling of the sound that was a conventional sense with the, uh, it was there, now it is no longer there. Now the electronic things have come in, so it is possible now to measure accurately. Uh, subjectivity is gone. Now uh, classification when we say broadly classify, so 90% of the cases it is the uh, primary or the essential hypertension and uh, of course secondary hypertension which is uh, uh, secondary to the glomerulonephritis, renal disorders and tumors of adrenal glands and toxemia, the pregnancy of course they are there. So these are the common but 90% cases is known as uh, uh, you can say the primary uh, hypertension that is the essential hypertension. Now, uh, what is the rule of the house says ki, it was an iceberg phenomenon in 1970 they say ki, only 50% of the people who are actually aware of the hypertension and out of those 50% uh, only 50% are treated properly and out of those 50% there are only 50% are adequate to give an example 1000 people only 500 of if they are hypertensive only 500 are aware out of which only uh, 250 are treated and out of that 125 only treated adequately. This is a very important problem and uh, earlier it was a disease of the developed countries but now it is coming down to the developing countries also like India also. Now a broad distribution in the community, normotensive, hypotensive, these are the basic diagnosis. Now what is important, the most important aspect is treated adequately. Treated adequately word is more important because uh, giving treatment is one thing and uh, adequately treating so that continue to maintain at a particular level and uh, thereafter you say uh, target organ uh, damage prevention should be the aim. Now problem statement, worldwide there are approximately 75 lakhs deaths occur every year 
and uh, that means that constitutes almost about 12.8% uh, of the total deaths are due to hypertension directly or indirectly. And uh, the daily disability adjusted loss of years, that is work loss, work hours loss is 57 million daily due to this million are due to this only. And uh, this is a major risk factor of the IHD stroke mm -hmm. and other things. And uh, you can say with every rise of 20 to 30, the risk of the heart uh, CHD and stroke also doubled. Okay. Now, Indian scenario basically studies have been done by the ICMR and uh, they say we, over 25 we have to take how many people have in tracking is a new modality which is there. They say give, now they say it, hypertension should be measured from the childhood. It, the seeds are sown somewhere in childhood whether it's the primary hypertension or whatever reason the hypertension is there, the seeds are sown somewhere or the beginning is somewhere in the childhood also. Because now child type of that uh, cuff is there available and the child uh, in the early age, say 7, 8 years, 10 years old child, it is done and it has been found in the long term studies, those uh, children who are having on the higher side tend to have hypertension on the higher side in the later age also. So that is tracking has become very important. Now uh, risk factors. Now, these are risk factors are basically two broad categories of risk factors are there. One was the modifiable risk factors are there, then non-modifiable. The modifiable risk factors, uh, well, we'll cover later. Non-modifiable age is important, sex and genetic uh, and the ethnicity is important. Age is very important, like with the increasing age, the possibility is there. Sex, females are basically more uh, protected till the menopausal age and less likely. Genetic factors, of course, they are there. And ethnicity, certain uh, particular ethnic groups it is more common. Then the modifiable are obviously very simple to guess that is obesity, salt intake, saturated fat, dietary fibers, alcohol and the physical activity and all these factors are these are the modifiable factors which can modify it. Now one more thing is there the salient points of factor age is important but not a in the some kind of primitive uh, society it's important. I will give males more prone to have distinct sex difference disappears after the menopause, little menopause, the hormones they give some kind of protection and maybe estrogen has got some role in preventing the high level of hypertension somewhere in the females up to the age of menopause there after the protection is taken off. Then genetic uh, inheritance is essentially polygenic. Twin studies, family studies, then there's monozygotic twins are strong correlation and zygotic twins, it is less uh, correlation is there. Obviously, final normotensive hypertension parent family studies. Children, well, now here first uh, degree relatives have got some correlation is there. And uh, ethnicity is important. One is the black Africans are more, black migrant Americans population is the higher incidence. It's a safe example during, uh, say what has happened, quite a few people from South Africa, they migrated to USA and they have the uh, higher incidence. So the genetic uh, or the racial uh, thing is there. Now modifiable risk factors may now which come to obesity, the central obesity, that is the, this is the central part of this to say. And salt intake is the single factor which is responsible. It has been proved beyond doubt in, uh, in some study in the uh, Central Africa region where there is a particular country, a particular region is there, a totally landlocked lock, and the, uh, the people who are staying there have not heard of salt and in that particular place when the, it was the studies were carried out it was found the uh, hypertension was unheard of. So salt intake has got a direct correlation with the hypertension. Japanese the high incidence is there 400 millimoles uh, per day salt intake high incidence and primitive societies you see in the Adivasis and all this and they have got 60 millimoles salt intake and very low incidence of hypertension. Then postulation is that poor renal clearing capacity for the salt is a major factor and potassium high uh, uh, potassium and calcium and cadmium have a role in the prevention. So high intake of calcium and potassium and uh, cadmium have got a role in prevention of the hypertension. Now saturated fat is important, HDL, VLDL, LDL levels and all these things are affected. Dietary fibers reduces definitely LDL alcohol, rises systolic BP. And uh, of course, now physical activity is definitely has got a positive intake, positive impact on the HDL. If the HDL goes out, and that it controls the hypertension. Now, in manual stress plays a major factor, especially in the cities and the highly educated societies, which is there rise in noradrenaline and sympathetic nervous activity. Then, of course, noise, vibration, temperature, humidity, all these things which are present in the industrial countries, industrial settings, 
with uh, settings when compared with this is important. Now comes the prevention and conditioning. There are basically two, three levels as usual. And we talk about the primary prevention, secondary prevention. And uh, primary also has the two elements that is the population strategy and the high, high risk strategy, of course. Now, uh, of course, now primary, secondary, tertiary, and all these things are but essentially we will be covering the primary. So, because from the community medicine point of view, that is the population strategy and the high risk strategy. Now, population strategy is very easy to explain in this case. Ki, you uh, apply certain measures for the entire population. The high risk strategy means you identify those people who are in the high uh, by virtue of their age, by virtue of their sex, by virtue of their genetic uh, predisposition. So you focus on that. Okay. Now that is the high risk strategy. Now population strategy which are uh, most important the risk on it. Population strategy has a good promise. Health education is very important. Even small reduction in the achievements possible. Better nutrition education. That is one uh, important population strategy. That is the most important thing. That of course they reduce the content of the fat and the salt, encouraging and restrictions on the alcohol and encouraging weight reduction, bringing down the body mass index. These are the three things, three four things which are there. They are basically done by the better nutrition education all the same population and uh, carrying out the programs for the uh, training of the people for the weight reduction and bringing down the BMI. That will have long-term effects in reducing the overall incidence of the hypertension. Now, behavioral changes, that is the decrease in the smoking tobacco. Of course, these things are regulatory things are there. We're putting the warnings and there are certain measures which are, as you know, for the prevention of uh, smoking. It can be done. It's also part of primordial prevention, you can say, for that matter. And of course, yoga has been proved to reduce the hypertension. Now, self-care is most important case. Then high risk strategy is good for the communities where the low incidence is there. Now, as such, now what is happening in the rural settings and certain communities it is less, but uh, it is then the low incidence only population studies. The secondary prevention is essentially the early case detection and treatment. And then what is more important, the complete treatment. Now, DASH, that is the dietary approach. This is very important thing, dietary approach to stop hypertension. This is all dietary factors contributing to achieving goal. These dietary factors are very important. That is comes with the salt, fat, saturated fat and omega-3 and so many things are there. Definitely all combined put together dietary approach and a stroke. Now, a stroke is another thing which is correlated, as it related with the hypertension, acute severe manifestation of cerebrovascular disease, rapidly developing clinical signs of focal disturbance of cerebral function, lasting more than 24 hours may lead to death also. So, this is 24 hours is important to exclude TIA, subdural hematoma, tumors, poisoning and all these things are which are there. A stroke is important manifestation of the cerebrovascular disease and again that relation with the Manifestation cerebral dysfunction may be due to occlusion, stenosis or rupture and leads to hemiplegia, monoplegia, paraplegia, hemiparesis and all these things. Basic classification is the lacrimal infarct, carotid circulation obstruction and the vertebrobasilar obstruction. These things are there. But again somewhere in the base is hypertension has the underlying factor quite a few occasions it is there. Now comes the hemorrhagic stroke. That is again hemorrhagic stroke is very spontaneous and uh, intracellular subarachnoid and intracranial aneurysms are there, arteriovenous malformation cell problems are there, central thrombosis most common and subarachnoid hemorrhage and cerebral hemorrhage. These things are different entities. Well, but some are way they are related like say for intracerebral subarachnoid, intracranial this as per the site and which level it has occurred. Ultimately, bottom line is again they will lead to the common symptom that is a stroke. Okay. Now, cerebral world disease, it is uh, more common. Six million plus people deaths worldwide occur every 60 lakh is quite a bit, and it is 10.8 of the total deaths. And with the increasing life expectancy, is now in the that's a very in thing. Now, what is happening as the uh, age of uh, say life expectancy is going up. <coughs> number of cases of cerebral vascular disease are coming up. Now, developing developing countries, different patterns are there. Developing countries, it is 34% people are below 70, while developed countries, it is a disease of average is 73, while older population is there. Well, you can say so that developing countries is coming slightly early. Care of the, the stroke, survivors is a major issue. That is one of the issues because what happens ki Surviving having stroke is one issue and after that once the recovery is occurred, care is again important. If there is complete recovery, no issue, 
If the recovery is incomplete in that case, care is major uh, survivor show or 60 to 80 percent show some or other kind of improvement is there. Now, Indian scenario, younger population is more affected. Like this said, the developing countries are to 17, India incidence something like 1.5. Uh, over per, per thousand per year and deaths are something like 0.6 per thousand per year. Yes, it is on the higher, it, it is on the rise. The most important worrying factor is 20% people are below the age of 80. So as compared to the developed countries in India, it is coming slightly early. Now in Indian daily uh, loss of the days is about 93 lakhs and deaths are approximately 63,000 per year. In India, males are again more affected and 75% uh, of the cases, you remember that's what I wanted to emphasize, the, they have got some or other kind of comorbidities, for example, hypertension and diabetes and uh, stroke can is essential. Uh, now, okay. Now, so I conclude here. I try to summarize it in brief, that is hypertension and stroke which are uh, related to each other, some or other way, because 75% cases in India, somewhere underlying uh, factor is hypertension is uh, very much there. There can be other factors as I mentioned, they are there. Hypertension is something, uh, it is sort of reached an epidemic proportion, large number of population, more and more they are affected and uh, it is it is preventable because there are certain non-modifiable factors we cannot do. But uh, now what has happened, largely in the developing countries and uh, like countries like India, uh, modifiable factors have become more important. And if the modifiable factors, uh, which may be the part of the primordial prevention, if are able to achieve it, nothing like it, and we are able to do uh, achieve whatever is likely to be achieved. Uh, thank you.